Christmas. Dude, what are you doing here? I thought you were only here on the first episode of December each year. Christmas. What the crap is this? Christmas. Holiday Lemmings, I've already covered this. I mean, granted it was like nine years ago and there's a lot more to say and more versions to cover Christmas. and I could do a whole lot better job. Okay, fine, I'll cover it. Christmas. Uh, So yeah, I covered both Lemmings and Holiday Lemmings for the Amiga years ago, but at the insistence of the Christmas clone, here we are again. Holiday Lemmings, Christmas Lemmings, Xmas Lemmings, these releases are all known by a variety of different titles on the Amiga, Macintosh, and PC. We'll be looking at the PC versions throughout this video because DOS. Each Holiday Lemmings entry sticks to the same concept. It's the classic real-time puzzle platformer Lemmings, just with a festive makeover befitting the season. The Lemmings now sport a Santa suit, the ground is covered in ice and snow, and the environments are filled with icicles, snowmen, strings of colorful lights, flailing Santa things, and Christmas puddings. But it was not conceived as a full game initially. The first of these was Christmas Lemmings, or Xmas Lemmings 91, distributed during the holiday season of late 1991, as a promotional demo for the upcoming Oh No More Lemmings pack. Since that wouldn't be released until the following February, Christmas Lemmings was handed out at UK trade shows as a holiday freebie teasing the next Lemmings game. As such, the original floppy disk can be tough to find, especially the IBM PC one, but the disk was widely copied and shared back in the day, so I just made my own disk. It also came with a printable README file, acting as a brief introduction to both the gameplay of Lemmings and the Holiday Demonstration Disc. Though I'm not sure calling Lemmings a game of adventure, romance, and salvation is the most accurate description for new players. But anyway, Xmas Lemmings 91 was a standalone experience, though one with only two unique holiday levels, Merry Christmas Mr. Lemming and Christmas Bonus, along with two more levels from the upcoming Oh No More Lemmings. And despite the minuscule content, the demo went over well enough that a follow-up was quickly slapped together and released in magazine cover disc form in early 1992. This time there were twice the holiday-themed levels, making for a total of four, each of them exclusive to this particular demo disc. But once again it spread like wildfire among the Amiga, PC, and Mac gaming communities, hitting bulletin board systems and being copied left and right among anyone with a disc drive. Smelling the potential for profit, DMA Design and publisher Cygnosis put together a more complete Christmas Lemmings experience, resulting in Holiday Lemmings in December of 1993. This time it contained 32 unique maps split up into two difficulty levels, selling at retail in the UK, parts of Europe, and North America at a price of about $15. And once again, people spread the game far and wide online, despite it being paid commercial software this time. This was how I first discovered Holiday Lemmings back in the mid-90s on the AOL Games channel. I had no idea it even had a retail presence until I rediscovered it on some abandonware site over a decade later, but yeah. Piracy was never one to stop Cygnosis from making bank and pumping out Lemmings sequels, with 1994 Holiday Lemmings hitting store shelves in December of 94. This contained yet another 32 levels on top of the existing 32 from the 93 edition for a total of 64 unique maps. While the 91 and 92 levels still remain exclusive to those, I'd easily recommend Holiday Lemmings 94 if you had to pick just one, since it feels the closest to a full-sized Lemmings game. Inside each of these little boxes we got here in the US, there's an instruction booklet and a 3.5 inch floppy disk, though there are some elusive CD-ROM versions that I've never found. And yeah, the instructions are sparse but still perform the admirable task of informing new players about the ins and outs of Lemmings gameplay. <laughs> and there's even a section begging you not to copy the disk, but of course this stopped pretty much no one. Since they all look and sound nearly identical, we'll be playing the 94 edition from here onward, and once again this provides 64 levels, divided into four groups of 16, with Frost and Flurry being somewhat easier, and Hail and Blizzard being downright stupid. Fun and charming, but oh god, the pixel-perfect precision required. Uh, it gets tough, but if you've played Lemmings then you already knew that. In fact, what's fascinating about Holiday Lemmings 94 is that in terms of gameplay it was actually a throwback by the time it came out. 
By December of that year, this was the fifth full Lemmings game, with Lemmings to the Tribes coming out in 1993 and all new World of Lemmings launching in late 1994. Yet Holiday Lemmings sticks to the original Lemmings engine and gameplay, which a number of fans preferred anyway, myself included. So yeah, this ended up being a last hurrah for the original style of Lemmings before the series moved on to various 3D incarnations, paintball spin-offs, and the adventures of Lomax. Yeah, Lemmings went crazy for a bit, but Holiday Lemmings? Uh, it's just pure Lemmings. Raw and untouched, except for the Santa hats and snowy platforms, of course. And this MS-DOS version is precisely how I remember it, with twangy ad-lib sound and music and razor-sharp pixel art on a black background. Much as I dig the Amiga versions of Lemmings and Christmas Lemmings with their superior colors, sound, music, inputs, etc, etc, let me just say that when it comes to reliving my childhood, I don't really care. Back then it was all about DOS when it came to my computer gaming experience, and Holiday Lemmings was one of those few DOS games I was still playing well into the days of Windows 95. Sure, there were Windows Lemmings releases, I had those too, but these Christmas editions for DOS continue to stand out as something special. The classic ad-lib music, the cutesy FM synth sound effects, the particular way Lemmings explode into bright showers of pixels when you set off the Armageddon option. I don't know, I've played dozens of Lemmings versions and ports over the years, and this VGA version for DOS is still a personal favorite in terms of look and feel, with the Christmas iterations appealing to me even more than the original games these days. There's something magical about those tiny Lemming sprites with bobbing Santa hats and their one green pixel of hair flopping around. But yeah, as for the gameplay, yeah, it's Lemmings. It's fine. If you like Lemmings, you'll like this. If you don't, well, too bad, because it's just as brutal as the original. Your goal is to guide up to 99 Lemmings from the entrance to the exit of each level in a set quantity of time. To do this, you have a selection of skills along the bottom of the screen, often a limited number of them depending on the level. Based on the popular urban legend of Lemmings being suicidal, thanks for that 1950s Walt Disney, each Lemming will walk forward to their inevitable doom, unless you intervene by providing them a skill. Climbers, floaters, blockers, builders, bashers, miners, and diggers all do their part to navigate and manipulate the environment in order to achieve the task at hand. And of course, you can also explode them as necessary, which I guess is also based on another Lemmings myth. Yeah, I had never heard of that one till now, but I guess people also thought Lemmings blew up at one point, if the Encyclopedia Britannica is any indication. Anyway, saving these poor misunderstood rodents from themselves is the objective. And the only thing making it tie into the season is a coat of holiday paint. Not just Christmas either, you also get a Hanukkah menorah or two, along with some Happy New Year's well wishes. But that's it. Otherwise, it's the same game. So while you could rightfully criticize it for being a quick cash-in, because I mean, that's what it was, it's still a solid Lemmings game and an extra cheerful one at that. I agree with the words of Amiga format writer Rob Mead when he said, let's not be too scroogey about this. Even though Holiday Lemmings is obviously designed to make as much money for as little effort as possible, it still manages to be funny, frustrating, and incredibly addictive. And anything which takes your mind off that awfully big pile of Boxing Day washing up has to be a good thing. While I've never experienced a Boxing Day washing up, it sounds dreadful, so I'll accept it for what I assume it is. Much like Holiday Lemmings. This game is a delight, even today, so much so that I actually finished it for the first time while making this video. It took looking up a few solutions on YouTube, but whatever. I'll do what I have to in order to stay merry, bright, and most importantly sane this month of December. It seems like every year the season grows increasingly busy, chaotic, and generally absurd, but when I play some good old Xmas Lemmings, I'm brought right back to those times as a kid playing DOS games in the corner of my living room. Freezing outside the house, but toasty inside, nestled up in an office chair with a mug of hot chocolate, the warm glow of a CRT, and some daggone lemmings. This is a happy place, and I wouldn't change anything about it. If you liked this episode of LGR, then thanks! I have some more holiday-themed goodies coming soon during the month of December, with all sorts of games and tech each week of the year, so stay tuned! And as always, thank you very much for watching! <laughs>